Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. I'm reading morning prayer on Friday in ordinary time from the Church of England. Common Worship Daily Prayer is the book you're looking for if you're f- using a book. Uh, and morning prayer on Friday is in the morning and evening prayer during ordinary time section towards the beginning. You'll find it at the Church's website, at a Remus Daily Prayer and downloadable as app for Apple Android device. You're welcome to join me 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, if you're passing, and uh, at the same times, by the church's website and Facebook page. Um, website has details for Zoom codes, uh, Facebook page has the video, and the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Psalm 95, the Vanity Song of Triumph. O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today ye would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah on that day at Massa in the wilderness. When your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Appointed psalm this morning, 139. You'll find that at the back of the book, 139. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written, as day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How great, how deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! 
If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Know that you would slay the wicked, O God, that the bloodthirsty might depart from me. They speak against you with e wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. Do I not oppose those, O Lord, who oppose you? Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become mine own enemies also. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. So scrolling past our first Bible reading to the Song of Humility, turn back in our books to morning prayer on Friday. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. <clears throat> he will come to us like the showers like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is, is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Reading from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, starting at verse 1, going on to the first verse of the following chapter. Uh, so the Samuels are towards the beginning of the history section of the Hebrew Scriptures. So if you've got a Bible way covenant, if you open a quarter of the way in, you should be about there. First book of Samuel, with the large number 3 in the margin in 1 Samuel, that's the chapter number. Chapter 3 in the first book of Samuel. And we're reading from verse 1 uh, to the first verse of the following chapter. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, called Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak to your servant, speak for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end, for I have told him that I am about to punish this house, his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from you. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything that he and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. So this is an example from Hebrew scripture of um, <clears throat> a very um, definite um, encounter with God. <clears throat> now, depending on your views of these things, this might be um, an inspiration to how we might hear God in our day. 
<clears throat> or it might be, um, we might feel that this was written like this and presented like this to God's people, so that uh, when they heard people speaking in the name of God, they would have the impression that they actually really heard God's voice really speaking to them in their physical ears, just as we might hear a neighbour, friend or boss talking to us, actually through our physical ears or the radio or music file. <clears throat> and, and, and in fact says, um, the Lord came and stood there. So there's something really kind of physical about this interaction between Samuel and the Lord. And however we understand that, whether that's Jesus talking to Samuel in person, as what they call a Christophany, Jesus appearing like a time lord outside of time, if he can appear to people after his death, why can't he appear to people before his birth? Um, again, depending on how you understand these things. But uh, in the end, I would say that the truth is the same. However, we get to that point that God does interact with us. We can sometimes get it wrong and not think it's God talking to us, but it's a person, or sometimes a person can talk to us, and it is God talking to us, and sometimes it's a person, in it, and it isn't God. So we've got that kind of balance there. Yes, it's a physical experience, as it were, a real, a real experience, as it's presented. But in the first instance, Samuel was mistaken. Eli, despite his brokenness, and there was much wrong uh, in the way he and his uh, family were running the temple at the time, as we heard yesterday, and as we will hear tomorrow, as uh, Samuel talks to him about what God has told him. Nevertheless, God is still speaking through him, which gives us confidence also that we might hear the wrong thing, but if we listen and balance revelation through scripture, tradition and reason, uh, we might get to the right answer, even if uh, there are some elements of where we go for um, news uh, isn't necessarily um, all good, but there are elements of, for me that are good and bad, but there are things about me that uh, might help and direct others, so it gives me hope. And it's a change of regime uh, and an interesting reading to have. Today, as we wake up, somebody just said to me as I was coming over here, walking past, and we've woken up to a new MP and a new government. Luke 20 then, from 20 to 26, our next reading, scroll on to it if you're following online. Uh, Luke is the third gospel, so the gospels open the last third of the Holy Bible, if you've got both covenants in there. Uh, so we're looking for Matthew, Mark, and then Luke, gospel of Luke. And we're going to Luke with a large number 20 in the margin, chapter number 20, and uh, the small numbers in the text have a bit of... Uh, I was going to say symmetry, but a parallel, um, whatever we're going from verse 20 to, so it's uh, verse 20 as well. So we're Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, starting at verse 20. <coughs> I'm watching a video in my hands, so it might work better like that for you, who knows. Luke 20 from 20. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be honest in order to trap him by what he said, so as to hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. So they asked him, teach, we know that you are right in what you say and teach and you show deference to no one, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Show me a denarius whose head and whose title does it bear. They said, The emperors. He said to them, Then give to the emperor the things that are the emperors, and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able, in the presence of the people, to trap him by what he said. And being amazed by his answer, they became silent. Read. So they watched him. I'm just uh, scrolling back to yesterday. I, I presume that's the scribes and the Pharisees. Yes, yeah, scribes and the chief priests. Uh, after he told the story about the uh, vineyard <coughs> and uh, the owner going away and coming back, having sent uh, uh, messengers and then son <coughs> and the son being put to death, we told the scribes and the uh, chief priests realise he's talking about them. They watch, send spies, pre pretending to be honest but trying to trap him. And that's a very interesting little sort of insight, because as we read the Gospels, we have Jesus talking to people. And uh, sometimes we're told who it is that's talking to me, sometimes we're not. Sometimes as we read it through, we realise that they are just trying to trap him. And sometimes, in fact, uh, they really are wanting to learn and wanting to do it better, because the Pharisees, the good Pharisees, were wanting to do God as well as they could. <coughs> and they're very close to Jesus' view. They believed in um, resurrection. They were charismatic. They believed in the power of God therefore, um, and uh, holy living and piety. But they were, because they were so close, they were also so distant, and I think that's why they crossed swords, if you like, why they um, antagonised Jesus to such an extent, because he was so cross with them, because they were so nearly there. But uh, here they say, should we pay taxes to, to the temple or to Caesar? 
And uh, this was a big deal in those days because they were oppressed by Rome. And if he said uh, the temple, then Rome would have been crossed. And if they said Rome, then the temple would have been crossed. Um, but he just said, show me a, a coin. And it's got the emperor's picture on it, so give it to the emperor. And by extension, he is saying that we should, <clears throat> in terms of our lives, um, we should give to our family what we should give to our family. We should give to ourselves what we should give to ourselves. We should give to God what we should give to God. We should give to... Uh, our calling, our engagement with the community, our work, what we should give to that. They are different spheres of the people that we are. <clears throat> and we are we bear God's image, so we should give ourselves to God. Um, but we recognise reading this that we are living in um political situation, we're living in a community situation where we give our money that makes a difference. It's not likely to be a capital offence, it might have been there. It might not cause us to be ostracised by our neighbours. I don't know if we've given money over the last few days to the uh, one or other for the party's election campaigns and people knew about it. If we were brave enough to put a poster up for what our political views were, um, that may or may not have uh, caused schism and separation, if not hatred and hostility. And uh, So this was basically a trap. It was one of those kind of, have you stopped beating your wife recently? And if you stop beating your wife questions, um, where if you say yes, then that means you were beating her. And if you say um, no, then that means you are continuing to. It's a kind of a clever no right answer question. And yet Jesus wriggles out of it. And uh, typical uh, rabbinic debating, antagonistic creativity out of conflict uh, discussion. But uh, plenty to chew on and think about ourselves as we head into the day. The responsory back in morning prayer on Friday, ordinary time. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation, be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. The song of Zechariah. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the God, the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, <clears throat> free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, <clears throat> and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Sacrifice, Saviour, seal, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the beginning of this day and we are reminded that uh, before we were, you were, and we were caught up in you uh, before creation as uh, you are expressed in human form. And we thank you for that pre-beginning preparatory existence, I suppose. And uh, we thank you, therefore, that we can be prepared for the day ahead and our preparation can be informed by the sure and certain knowledge of your death in our place. That all that is wrong about us and our world uh, has been done away with, broken through, humiliated, exposed, cleansed, changed, redeemed, healed. And we thank you for that and we pray that we might live in that sure and certain knowledge, that we might be confident in ourselves, but that we might walk tall and speak boldly with love and courage to those who need to know that redemption, that healing, that forgiveness, that security, sense of worth and value. <coughs> World Council of Churches, prayers for Sudan, South Sudan and Uganda. We're thankful for the economic progress and peace building that has occurred in Uganda and for effective measures to curb the spread of HIV and AIDS. And we pray for natural resources to be preserved and the land saved from further desertification. Christian Action Church Education. Uh, with them we give thanks to many organisations 
such as Beyond the Streets and those that work with it, that uh, contact make contact with people exploited for sex. We pray that you strengthen those organisations in all compassion and grant knowledge, legal, social, therapeutic expertise to help survivors to escape prostitution, um, if that is what they wish to do, and rebuild their lives. And uh, We pray for to investigate those who entrap people into those circumstances, that uh, they might be um, choose to change their ways, and uh, or be found out by the investigative organisations and brought to justice, and that those they have entrapped be brought to safety and fulfilment. Turning to Green Christian. We pray for the government and the new parliament, especially those portfolios that affect most closely our global environment, including the Prime Minister, Chancellor, the Exchequer, Secretary of State, Secretary of Environment, Secretary of Energy, and Minister of State. Which is the uh, Foreign Office, apparently. And this is a prayer that's apparently read each day in Parliament. Lord, the God of righteousness, truth grant to our King and his government, to members of Parliament, and all in positions of responsibility, the guidance of your Spirit. May they never lead the nation wrongly through love of power, desire to please, or unworthy ideals, but laying aside all private interests and prejudices, keep in mind their responsibility to seek to improve the condition of all humanity. So may your kingdom come and your name be hallowed. And then we pray for uh, uh, those who've been involved locally and by extension all those across the country put so much time and effort into um, canvassing those who've made themselves available to be elected and all the highs and lows and heartbreaks brought to an absolute climax last night. And we pray for Adrian, our new MP here, and for Richard, who was uh, for a time ahead. And uh, we also have made an excellent um, constituency MP, uh, where he affiliated perhaps to a different party, whose national people, as with many, have kind of let them down. <coughs> and I know that even um, Labour locally might have done better if they'd uh, been more socialist centrally. But uh, we find ourselves with three right-wing parties, three left-wing parties, and a new landscape with all to play for in this new constituency with a new Green MP. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our engagement with creation. Pope Francis' prayer, which I borrowed and serialised, teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Benefit Cycle, we pray for voluntary organisations across the town and uh, we thank you for them. They look after MenCap, look after our green space, um, look after our churches, um, drive people to appointments and get them their prescriptions. Those that support schools, the library, those that are sorting out the old Methodist church to make it a new community space. Alongside those who give their time as politicians, but we're preparing for them more specifically tomorrow. And we thank you for those connections, and we pray that uh, despite people having big personalities in this small place, we pray that we'll work together and any conflict will be creative rather than destructive. We thank you for our people today, praying for those in the uh, St Michael group, St Michael Cookley, St Margaret Herring, St Mary Huntingfield, St Mary Walpole, Jane, Jeanette, Emma, Lee and Ken respectively. Uh, we've got some role names at Cookley, Roy, Robert, Trina, Margaret, Mark, Nicola, Valerie, Robert, Joanna, Susan, Alan, Dooney, uh, and Hevingham, David, Jenny, Susan, David, Mary, Patrick, Sadan, Roger, Jackie, Judith, ba Barry, Jacqueline, Jane, Tony, Dooney, and Sue. And uh, we thank you for them. And those would be on names, uh, would be on the roles if I had them in front of me to pray for. And uh, we thank you uh, for those people. We pray that you draw others into those uh, committees. Uh, we could do with um, another warden now and perhaps another couple of people prepared to be warden, one to step up. And we could do with a uh, treasurer and a secretary for Cookley. I think we've got a secretary at Heffingham, we could do with another warden there. Uh, and uh, I think we've got a, otherwise a very active PCC now, which is excellent. Hunting Field there is a good, strong group of friends. We could do with somebody else being prepared to step up as warden. Uh, and uh, maybe an, a, another one or two just on the committee to increase their 
capacity, but they're also very strong, so we thank God for that. And uh, all pulled likewise, got the full complement there, however, and uh, we could draw, draw um, one or two in who might be prepared to take up the reins and stand maybe even against those who are offering themselves for service that we might be able to choose between them and give people a break and rotate um, those uh, responsibilities to increase people's understanding of skill set and ability to contribute. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fukushima <laughs> Ponyakatiya <laughs> Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world to lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.